This is what prosthetics used to look like. Prosthetics technology has gone from hooks like this to hands with limited motion like this. I've come to Newcastle University to meet soon to be Dr. Jennifer Olsen, who's going to show me the massive difference she's making in upper arm prosthetics. We're with my 3D printers. These are one of the biggest tools that I use as an engineer. A lot of my job is prototyping and designing things as a sort of biomedical engineer when I'm designing new types of sockets or I'm, I'm trialing a new socket for somebody. These are just a really, really convenient way to manufacture things. So at the moment we have a prosthetic hand over here and we also have some little sensors. These are called myoelectrodes, which is basically just a little sensor that measures your muscle activity. We're going to put some sensors on you if you don't mind. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to be the crash test Yeah, dummy. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why does that need to be part of this? The hand needs instructions. You would need to tell it when you want it to open and when you want it to close. Yeah. Um, and one of the most convenient ways to do that is to just use our own natural muscle activity. So if that person's had an amputation, they usually still have usable muscles in that limb and we can use those to control the hand. We, we tend to like these two in particular. So you've got your extensor group, your wrist extensors and your um, wrist flexors. So your brain can still give your muscles instructions, yeah. but then those instructions are transferred to that yes. and that tells something like that, what to do. It's actually something we're going to do today. It's a bit like rock, paper, scissors, except it's not rock, paper, scissors. Oh, I love that. What I'll do This is... feels like the medical part of biomedical aid. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to feel your arm. Can you push outwards for me? No, so that's you're good. recording yeah. that movement. Yeah. So if you pulse that now for me, we should be able to see you. So you're moving that bar up and yes. down. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. If you contract inwards, you get this sort of phone signal. Okay. If you contract outwards, you get a fist. And if you contract them both together like a squeeze, it should point. Yeah. The idea is that I'm always do. Ooh. <laughs> that's you. Yes, well done, you got the point. That's, yeah. that's the hardest one, I think, trying to do them both. So cool, because <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of the amputee who won't have this part of their arm yeah. but they're telling the muscles here what to do so maybe they're imagining what their hand might do yes all of this takes a team of people what's your specific focus so for me we've got these sensors that obviously wouldn't normally be attached to your arm using stickers that normally just be recessed into the socket wall. What I'm trying to do is design prosthetic sockets that facilitate that connection better. So how can we change the shape of this or change the design of this, maybe change the materials so that there's no disturbances happening. You're not getting, you know, those electrodes moving around. If I can facilitate that reliable connection between machine and person, it will make the devices a lot more reliable and my colleagues have then got a reliable signal to mm. work with and, and process. I was 17 and I didn't actually really know what an engineer was. So I was at sixth form and, and one of the outreach ambassadors there was like, have you considered engineering? And I was like, isn't that just like cars. cars and trains. And he thankfully had the sense to say, well, what about engineering, but make it biomedical engineering. Within months, I just got obsessed. You know, I designed a new type of elbow for the, like a school competition. I, I genuinely love my job. <laughs> So you can see how the different layers have been built up um, while we've been away. They are super cute. <laughs> These really look like what we've been handling. Yeah. We are going to give away. Yes. To a couple of readers. Yeah. Can I keep one? Of course you can. I would love to of course have you one, can. Please. So we're going to give away the other two of these three mm -hmm. to readers of the book. You will get a little key ring. Yeah, I drew it. by Jenny. Yeah, I drew it and turned it into a 3D object and, and now it's here. <laughs> Why did you decide to focus in on how the sensors interact with the amputee's limbs? So, for the arms. Oh, for the arms. Yeah. So for me, whenever I see, you know, a problem, I, it's just, I think this is just the engineer mindset, but I just want to give it a go and I want to try and fix it. And I could see that there was an issue with sort of the mechanical aspect of the socket, the way it actually fits onto the person's arm, was impacting all of the technical like electronics behind it was impacting the signal detection and therefore the function of the hand. I thought, oh, okay, my, my skills are mechanical, that's that's where what I enjoy doing. And the fact that I could perhaps use that to help this problem, that was just a really exciting prospect to me. 
I love meeting engineers that really combine their interests and their passions and their skills to do something that really makes a difference. You know, when I was wearing those sensors, it really made me realize how sensitive technology is to the way we behave. And that has switched on quite a few light bulbs in my mind. I hope it has for you too. Thank you so much for watching.